You know, there was a few things that were really garnering my interest. Uh, this biosynthesis of cannabinoids was super interesting, like yeah. making minor cannabinoids more prevalent by finding alternative methods, right? That was really cool stuff. Uh, water solubility or, or stability, like making uh, infused beverages. Like I just know beverages going to be a huge category yeah. and finding the secret to do it. And he grabs a glass of water, dumps it in, and it just like, disperses and it's clear. I tasted it and it was fairly innocuous. Yeah. And like, I just went straight tunnel vision at that point. Like there could have been no one else in the room. We don't believe in, in the one size fits all, you know, label for this particular technology. It's actually a very complicated chemistry. Yeah. We approach each SKU with each new customer completely differently. And we ask them, you know, what are you trying to deliver to your consumer? What's the experience that you want them to have? The mouthfeel, the taste. And, and beverage has been super interesting. Like we could literally infuse anything that has water in it. But we love beverage uh, because it is actually truly a new experience. It's a new way to absorb the cannabinoids. Yeah. It can be very complex. It's perceived to be a lot healthier since you're not smoking or vaporizing. Mm -hmm. We've seen 60 and 70 year old women trying cannabis for the very first time, having a very beautiful experience and coming back raving about it to all their friends. Uh, we've had people give us really incredible uh, testimonials on the medical applications. Like, literally a woman living in pain for 20 years with fibromyalgia, you know, having one little vial, five milligrams of THC, all of a sudden sleeping through the night, painless, you know, it's just, yeah. it's really special work, you know. Um, yes, and we get is. to do this every day. And, and this is the real exciting thing for me is beverage is a great format to really experiment with, uh, you know, what is commonly called the entourage effect. Mm. Um, but when people use the entourage effect in cannabis, they're usually talking about the various cannabinoids and ter terpenes in the plant. Mm. Um, but entourage can go well beyond that. Like how does CBD and THC interact with caffeine or L-theanine or ashwagandha, right? It's like really diving into kind of a broader uh, plant science and, and understanding like the different types of experiences we can create. What we're actually doing is creating these little vehicles um, that you can put oil inside that are friendly with water and it's more of a suspension system. But the, the science that we do makes it so that that completely homogenizes and stays stable over time. This is the value that we're creating right now. Our, yeah, yeah, our customers come to us and they say, you know, we want to put THC, CBD, this full spectrum, spectrum extraction into a beverage. It's like, okay, we can help you do that. We can figure out the right emulsion system. The future is understanding how to control the experience, right? And so, so yes. right now, we're letting our customers be the creative ones. No, someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? What's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are on site at the beautiful New West Summit, the Cannabis Tech Conference. We are now going to be speaking with Ben Larson. Thank you, Alan. Hi, Ben. Good to be here. Thanks so much for coming on our show. My Super pleasure. Super pumped for this. It's been a long time in the making. It has. Yeah. I've, I've gone through many lifetimes since uh, meeting you. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Damn. Yeah. yeah, it has. And um, it's great both, you know, being a part of Founder Institute as well. And also um, you yourself starting Gateway, the premier cannabis startup accelerator, uh, and now being the CEO of Vertosa. Mm -hmm. And I'm so pumped to jump into this because the infusion of our products, our mm -hmm. beverages, uh, and just products at large is going to be a massive part of how we educate and onboard and all mm -hmm. different types of stuff. So, um, Ben, let's jump into things on a you know on a journey perspective. You know, you found yourself, you know, being born into this world. How did you identify you know who, what your north star is and what how you ended up pursuing that? Yeah, it's a great question. It's been a little bit of a circuitous route. Um, you know, growing up. I was always someone that had a lot of ideas, right? Like I just constantly, I was that kid that was sitting in the back seat of the car saying, hey mom, wouldn't it be great if we had a coffee machine that would wake up before you and cook your coffee for you? And it's like, well, you know, that clearly exists now. Um, but it was just, I never had the opportunity to like really take these ideas to fruition. Or maybe I just didn't have 
uh, the knowledge of how to do it. And so, you know, circuitous route. I actually ended up going to school for, for engineering when I actually wanted to be an architect. I took way too many classes, ended up having to, having to graduate at a certain point and enter the world of, uh, of professional engineering. Um, but being in the Bay Area, you're just around so many inspiring people, uh, actually creating things that are touching people's lives, and I just fell in love with it. So at a certain point, I just quit engineering, got right into it, and um, you know, from my very first startup, everything that I've done has been about helping people realize their, their ideas and their dreams. And so that what eventually took me to Founder Institute. You know, the skills that I picked up working with startups all around the world, learning how to build startup ecosystems, that's what took me into the cannabis industry. It wasn't about a love of the plant. Um, it is now. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. what took me into that, this industry was, you know, people doing what they love and care about and risking everything to do so. And at the time, this was back in 2015, I uh, saw a lot of capital trying to come in the space, and there's just this big disconnect. And in the tech industry, that's what we've learned. You know, that's why startup incubators, startup accelerators were created, to, to bridge that gap between these very passionate, you know, smart entrepreneurs uh, and the, the capitalists that were looking to kind of help build this industry. Um, and that was kind of the nexus of Gateway. And Where did the cannabis bug come in, though? Yeah, it kind of just found me. Um, you know, I was asked to mentor, coach, um, and judge some startup competitions purely focused on the cannabis industry. Mm. This is a you know very Bay Area, Bay Area phenomenon, right? Yeah. Like back in 2015, people pitching cannabis companies. Uh, I could probably count on two hands the number of times I'd consumed cannabis before that. Um, but it was very eye-opening, and, and it felt very much like the early days of tech, where you just had this, this raw talent and, and passion and it just need a little bit of guidance, right? Yeah. And so a 30-minute session with a founder pitching their company could phenomenally change their pitch uh, to be more appealable to investors or to be more on the right path of, of creating a commercializable product. Mm -hmm. And so that was the opportunity, right? Like I, my partner and I at the time, we had been asked to help evaluate early stage deal flow for a fund that had been created for the industry. And after looking at it, it was just like, well, you're having problems because you don't have really true deal flow. You need to be able to compare these to the same investment opportunities that are in the tech industry, right? And so that was the vision coming into the industry. It's like, we need to take all this raw talent and, and make it more appealable to the mainstream and, and raise the bar. And so, you know, that's what we did. That's what I continue to do today uh, with Vertosa. You know, we're, we're working with great brands. We're trying to create consistent products that really appeal to the mainstream and make it repeatable so that it's scalable. And so it's... It's all, always about asking the right questions. It's like, you know, and, and we learn this in startup world. It's like, what are you trying to deliver to your consumer? Like, always make it about the consumer. And especially as an emerging market, as an emerging category, I think this is very important stuff, right? We need to know who we're serving and we need to learn how to speak to them, educate them, and, and bring them along the journey. Yes, yes, this idea that, um your ability to compress your North Star down into an elevator pitch can then catalyze your ability to fund uh, your North Star projects at greater efficacies and mm -hmm. also sell your uh, North Star projects uh, along the journey as well. Right. It's just a, a compression algorithm. Can you figure out how to do it well enough? Can you write it down a thousand times? Can you uh, really just continue synthesizing and distilling over and over and over again? And also uh, then uh, can you have someone that has experience like you review it and then that way they can give you feedback and mm -hmm. um, then if in 2015 when you're seeing you know cannabis pitches if those got refined better and better, you can uh, catalyze the emerging market rising faster by um, giving them feedback. Look, I mean, th there's, there's a lot of things at play here. And, and everyone used to be at the mindset, it's like, oh, that's pretty good for a cannabis company. And we're like, no, no, it needs to be as good, but better uh, than every other company out there. Because not only do we have to make something that is actually truly scalable and actually investable, but we have to earn the trust of, of the regulators, of the general community. Like there, there sh should be no room uh, for people to like poke holes in your business. 
uh, because you need to withstand all these external pressures. And that has been the hardest thing in this industry. It's, it's hard enough to build a business. Um, it's extremely hard to build a business in a shifting regulatory landscape, yes. something that is questionably legal depending on who you ask. Yes. And you know, there's, there's just so much to learn. And we, we deal with a lot of new entrepreneurs in the space. Maybe it's their first time building a company. And, and so it's, it's in this space. Yeah. 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 So it is phenomenally hard. Like much credit goes to those that are that are actually trying to do it because they are pioneers and they are taking a lot of the bullets. You know, as far as like just trying to do the learning, and you know what it comes back to something that we preach a lot in in the Founder Institute is you really have to have a strong why. Like why are you here? Yeah. What is your north star? Yeah. Right. And, and for me, it is seeing these hurdles and helping people navigate them and truly realizing the, the dream that's in their head. Um, yeah, in their heart. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Then, so then that, that led to Gateway and then Gateway was uh, how many years, how many uh, companies went through Gateway? Right, so over three years we had 20 companies come through the investment portfolio. Um, and we would work, you know, day and night, six months straight with these companies and, and even beyond after kicking them out of the office. Um, but entering the industry when we did, 2015 in Oakland, uh, which was the kind of the birthplace of the advocacy movement, 215, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, we kind of had a cultural center. Like we opened up our doors to the community. We had a lot of events. We, we hosted Normal and, and Women That Grow and all this kind of stuff. Um, and we actually ended up having a co-working space, which you know also birthed quite a few companies. And you know our goal with Gateway um, was to eventually um, kind of work ourselves out of a job, right? We didn't want the co-working space to be necessary anymore. And as the years went on, you know more and more people went and worked at WeWorks and other people's offices, and there was the community that was becoming more and more public and less ashamed about what they were doing, mm. right? There's definitely times where, you know, we've both been at Runway over, over here in San Francisco, uh, where I think cannabis companies were very hesitant to kind of like be out in the open there. Um, there's one that, that, that I can really think of. Um, it was called Weed Club. It's actually, Weed Club was how I came into the industry. They were doing these pitch events. Um, I always thought it was funny, it was like, oh, they chose weed and just like lean right into it. Um, but you know, they put it out there, and I'm like, oh, there's actually weed businesses like mm -hmm. trying trying to build in this world. Um, you know, now we can work just about anywhere in the Bay Area, and it feels very natural, and that feels great to me. You know, uh, we we were able to take a heavily kind of like siloed, uh, you know, zero sum game kind of mentality uh, and turn it inside out, and have this culture of sharing and, and a rising tide. Um, and that feels really great. You know, we have a really strong community um, and it's all about helping each other succeed because like I said, you know, it hasn't been easy. 2018, you would expect with legalization that we would have all been really excited about it. Um, but it's been a really tough year. There was a purge um, of small businesses because you know, even though there's a lot, a lot of lip service paid to them, like we want to help small business, California's about small business, you know, the regula regulations just made it really difficult to survive. And so, you know, this has been a, it's been a beautiful but very difficult evolution and, and there's still a lot of long ways to go. Yeah, you try and make an accelerator for companies that are in a constantly shifting regulatory <laughs> market and also first time entrepreneurs trying to do that as well as like mm -hmm. a, a nuts as well. It's, just trying to start a business in general, let alone one in an emerging market that is, like you said, also occasionally deemed illegal by certain, you know, in certain places. And so, this is a, uh, this is this is very challenging. Twenty of them got uh, through mm -hmm. the gateway, and then um, it was this passed along to other people to operate. Uh, no, it actually ended up winding down. Uh, okay. my, my business partner and I decided to go separate directions. Um, I, interestingly enough, I was in the process of continuing it on in a new fashion, raising a new fund. Uh, this was going to purely be focus on B2B, kind of the boring side of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I did find over three years, like, what we really needed to do uh, is add sophistication and trust to the supply chain mm -hmm. if we were truly going to reach all those astronomic kind of valuations that, 
that people were quoting, right? The whole in this U.S. industry, 100 billion by 2030, or, or you know, these billion dollar brands that people are trying to build, the only way it's gonna be achieved is if we build uh, scalability into the supply chain, right? Scalability and supply chain. Really yeah, so, yeah. Um, trust. foreshadowing kind of what I'm doing now, it was, uh, you know, there was a few things that were really garnering my interest. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, biosynthesis of cannabinoids was super interesting, like yeah. making minor cannabinoids more prevalent by finding alternative methods, right? That was really cool stuff. Uh, water solubility or, or stability, like making uh, infused beverages. Like I just know beverages is going to be a huge category yeah. and finding the secret to do it. And there's been a lot of people dancing around it for several years. And, um, you know, I, was, I just knew the people that were going to do it right, there's going to be a big opportunity there. Yeah. And there's several others. but you know, in the process of raising that fund, um, I actually had met Harold, mm. who is our chief scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, his entire career is in surface chemistry. Um, wow. So purely focusing on the interaction between oil and water yeah. and learning how to control it, make it stable wow. and scalable. Wow. And so uh, he has a phenomenal background, PhD out of NYU. Um, and I tasked him, I was just, he's, you know, he, he was the one who came to me at, at Gateway. He was very interested in joining the industry. Um, wow. And he's like, "How do I help?" I'm like, "Look, you solve this problem. You're perfectly, you know, perfectly aligned for it. You know, solve it, and you'll have something really worth pursuing." Yeah. And he came back to me, uh, probably about a month later, <laughs> and he he did the Theranos thing. He showed me this little vial. He's like, "I think I figured it out." And I'm like, "Show me." And he grabs a glass of water, dumps it in, and it just like disperses, and it's clear. And I tasted it, and it was fairly innocuous. Yeah. And like, I just went straight tunnel vision at that point. Like, there could have been no one else in the room. It was actually like a Founder Institute event. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, what? Know, yeah. I, I was, you know, coaching Whoa. startups on pitching yeah. their companies. Yeah. He was pitching me, and I was just like, and and I started asking him questions, and he had been talking to some of the companies I had introduced him to. Everyone was already trying to acquire him, bring him in house, you know, do all this stuff. And I just asked him, I'm like, Harold do you want to build a company? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And so I said, you're not allowed to make a business decision without me. <laughs> I'm like, I just need, I want to make sure, you know, you protect yourself. He's a scientist, you know, he, he needed some guidance. And so I started advising him um, early 2018. Um, and then by summer, I was really encouraging him to bring on a CEO. And it was probably about a month after I gave him that advice that I kind of pitched myself to him. And so we launched the company and got straight to work. And so we've been working hard at it for about a year now. Yeah. Um, you know, what we realize it's, it's way beyond just one vial. It's way beyond just creating a formula and scaling it. We take a real, like, you know, we don't believe in, in the one size fits all, you know, label for this particular technology. It's actually a very complicated chemistry. Yeah. And so we approach each SKU with each new customer completely differently. And we ask them, you know, what are you trying to deliver to your consumer? What's the experience that you want them to have? The mouthfeel, the taste. And, and beverage has been super interesting. Like we could literally infuse anything that has water in it. Um, but we love beverage uh, because it is actually truly a new experience. It's a new way to absorb the cannabinoids. Yeah be very complex it's perceived to be a lot healthier since you're not smoking or vaporizing mm -hmm. um, so it's really exciting we've seen 60 and 70 year old women trying cannabis for the very first time having a very beautiful experience you know coming back raving about it to all their friends uh, we've had people give us really incredible uh, testimonials on the medical applications like literally a woman living in pain for 20 years with fibromyalgia you know, having one little vial, of five milligrams of THC, all of a sudden sleeping through the night, painless, you know, it's just, yeah, it's really special work, you know, um, yes, and we get is. to do this every day. Yes, yeah. whoa. It's really cool uh, learning about the Genesis story with Harold. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool how those things happen, and it's also great that, um, that this more complicated uh, chemical um, surface chemistry and, and just uh, solubility um, was able to be uh, achieved because now uh, it seems as though the possibilities, the combinatorics for uh, in 
uh, infusing uh, cannabis cannabinoids of all sorts into beverages mm -hmm. is uh, unlimited. There's so many possibilities and different people want uh, different, like you said, profiles of taste. And yeah. um, they may want different uh, five milligrams or 20 milligrams. They, you know, they, um, there's so many ways to, to pursue this. So you may want to do New West Summit, you may want to brand a do white white label yeah that so for this like event and uh, right. stuff like that or uh, it's just like it's just like you, you crack you know you get the little you just send a little you know um, you know voice to the device or soon thought <laughs> alone but then you know the little drone or robots coming in and bring you the little you know the little beverage it's just I mean yeah. we, we get to work with so many amazing people. You know, we placed ourselves right in the middle of the supply chain. We get to work with uh, farmers, oil extractors, you know, people doing like creating the most beautiful full spectrum live resins to CBD isolate manufacturers in Colorado, right? All, all those things. Flavor houses, co-manufacturers, uh, device makers. We, we've been working with multiple people who are trying to develop cold vaporizers. So basically just making a mist out of the emulsion. And so it's just a very high bioavailability, similar to a vaporizer experience, but with actually a, without having to heat up the cannabinoids. Um, you know, self-dosing systems where you can put cartridges in, each one has a different cannabinoid and you just kind of tell it the profile you want and like, yeah. it creates the beverage yeah. that you're looking for. Um, and, and this is the real exciting thing for me is beverage is a great format to really experiment with uh, you know, what is commonly called the entourage effect. Mm. Um, but when people use the entourage effect in cannabis, they're usually talking about the various cannabinoids and ter terpenes in the plant. Mm -hmm. um, but entourage can go well beyond that. Like how does CBD and THC interact with caffeine or L-theanine or ashwagandha, right? It's like Whoa. really diving into kind of a broader uh, plant science and, and understanding like the different types of experiences we can create. That's real combinatorics there too. Damn. So you got to add in uh, all other types of dosages of yeah of of, uh, of caffeines of uh, of teas of all different types of plants that uh, or extracts that uh, terpenes like you listed as well. Just like wow, it's endless. So then, what? How do you know? How do I know? What do I, like you know? What I even like? What, how do? How can you cure? How do you, can you take like an experience and then try and make like literally a beverage right. for? Yeah. yeah. For, uh, so, for starters, right now we don't. Right. So, <laughs> so right now we're purely focused on the vehicle. Right. Like we've created these amazing emulsion systems, and any time we run into a problem with like an unstable emulsion, we really focus on solving it. So. You put a traditional emulsion into a red wine that's very heavy in polyphenols, you're gonna find instability in the emulsion system. Um, we have created emulsion systems that are completely stable in high polyphenolic beverages. Um, same with can liners. There are different can liners have different reactions to different systems. Uh, we are making it a lot more predictable to understand what emulsion systems work in what cans and what environments. So, that's the vehicle work. We can put anything that we want inside those small vehicles and get them delivered into your body, right? So, okay, um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So we were just on like the massive, like decade-long epic, you know, vision, yeah. and now we're on uh, like baby step. Uh, Bring it back to when, here, where right. we're yeah, where we're yeah. here. So, what emulsion system? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, well, that related to solubility, right? So. Uh, it's not true solubility, right? So solubility is actually when the molecules bind and you, you have like a, a completely stable system. Like so when, you, when you put, you put sugar, salt, or, salt or, sugar or sugar and water, water, stir it up, boom. Solubility. And, and there are some technologies out there that people are working on where you're adding a sugar molecule or a salt molecule to a THC molecule. Um, interesting. Interesting science, very questionable about the safety or scalability, but um, it is one way chemically to think about going about it. Okay. What we're actually doing is creating these little vehicles um, that you can put oil inside that are friendly with water, and it's more of a suspension system. But the, the science that we do makes it so that that completely homogenizes and stays stable over time, right? So it's not true solubility, it's actually stable uh, in, in a suspension. Mm. And if you, you know, what you put into a bottle day one uh, should be the same as when you go to test it, should be the same as when the consumer experiences it, right? So, uh there's like a matrix of molecules <laughs> of water and 
Uh, it's, cannabinoids? So if, if you imagine uh, these little droplets that fall into the water and they're actually repelling each other and that's what creates a stable emulsion and keeps it homogenized, right? So uh, it's like if you imagine little magnets and you drop them in with the same poles, you know, they'd like bounce off of each other and remain intact. And that's the goal. You don't want to change the droplet size over time. And so you, in maintaining the integrity of that encapsulation. Um, the reason I kind of like dove back to this is because this is the value that we're creating right now. Our, right, yeah, our customers come to us and they say, you know, we want to put THC, CBD, this full spectrum, spectrum extraction into a beverage. It's like, okay, we can help you do that. We can figure out the right emulsion system. The future is understanding how to control the experience, right? And so, so yes. right now, we're letting our customers be the creative ones. And we are- The emulsion system is the hard science. That's right. Well, that's what I yeah. wanna, let's actually just take a, um, a little more time on that. So, sure. so what's some, um, like what would be the, like the girls, um, you know, Kristen Price and Sarah Baker, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have some very serious, uh, rare, diseases that people go through, rare health issues. Mm -hmm. And so then they need some sort of a full spectrum um, hemp CBD for, uh, for, for healing. Right. And uh, maybe they want it in, the, in, a, in a beverage, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a lot. It's like 400 milligrams in the beverage or something. You know, yep. Very high, very high dose. So then uh, what would a company like you do? How would you, you said there's like an emulsification yeah, so there, there's a multitude of things we can do. Uh, you know, for starters, uh, because this is a medical application, you know, it's probably less important about what the packaging is, right? It's like, oh, mm. we can put this in a glass tincture bottle. Mm. You know, we can, I, I don't think they're gonna put it into an mm. aluminum can. Mm. So that immediately lets us know, okay, we can use these emulsion systems for that. Because the, one of the problems like that, is this why you're listing it? Cause mm -hmm. the, the, because then it would, it would interplay with the molecular uh, aluminum. That's right. And yeah. then that and then the can liner. Important. There's an entire chemistry industry around like what those what the liners are inside the cans, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, okay. So that's an important facet. Okay. Then we get to like versus know, glass, which would right. be what, yeah, yeah, glass is a lot more stable. Stable. Um, okay. And then you know we say okay, you know how potent do we want this? Like 400 milligrams. That's quite a bit. So you're talking about taking a lot a, a lot of material and putting it into a smaller form factor. Maybe you know does mm -hmm. it have to be a certain size. Um, and based on that, based on the desired uh, taste and, and mouthfeel, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just about getting it to hit as quickly as possible. Sure. And we'd be like, all right, we can make it super bioavailable so that you feel it in less than 10 minutes mm. and that you, know, you get that relief when you need it. It's gonna be a little bit bitter, but man, if, you're, if it's saving your life, like, do you really care, right? The bioavailability, how yeah. fast it. Exactly. Is. So all these yeah. factors, you know, help us kind of align the right emulsion system. You know, we've made a thousand milligram product before. Um, we have a system for that. It's oh. probably much different than the system we would use for, for a 10, 10 milligram. milligram product. So emulsion systems differ ba uh, based, on, uh, based on dosages, based on packaging. Uh, they should, they, they should. should, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of where we really hang our hat, right? So you're an emulsification scientist. Mm -hmm. And so the emulsification process is making the cannabinoid uh, work with the water. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the, the interesting thing about these emulsion systems is the one that you create for a, 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 a tap water, um, you know, tastes completely innocuous. If you move it to a different matrix and you taste it, it might all of a sudden have a bitter note or you might have a more herbaceous note. So it's understanding that it's huh. not a one size fits all, right? And so. It just with that mentality, you know, we could probably go back and, and look through our recipe book for all of our different clients and have over, you know, 80 different formulas that we're using. Whoa, okay, so then there's now with, um, with, where, with where this is currently getting into, does this seem like um, most of um, Vertosa is, go is going to be, or uh, a lot of it is going to be its own unique product line being distributed or um, working with the different um, companies on custom making what they um, Yeah, like. you know, um, true to my North Star, it's all about facilitating other companies, right? Mm -hmm. So 
the reason I want to focus on the vehicle and, and create kind of this trusted layer, you know, ones where we go out and procure the best materials to ensure that we are working with the very best ingredients. The reason I really want to do that is so we can get back to this other 10 year vision of like mm. really creating great products and experiences. Mm. Like if we take care of all this complex stuff here, it gives the product makers the time and energy to think about, you know, what other bioactive ingredients can I add to this to really make a synergistic product? Okay. You know, like how do I take lavender oil and CBD and ashwagandha to make a truly relaxing product? That's exciting stuff. It is. Right? Yeah. And or stimulating one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, instead of making the supply chain and, and your access to it your differentiating feature, like why not make the true experience of the product your differentiator? Okay, this is really cool. So, and it has a tremendous foresight because what you guys do is you see the 10 year and you see that the 10 year requires you to become the best at the fundamental science of running all of the combinatorics. So you literally mm -hmm. take ideas and you're enabling creativity because you take the ideas from the industry and then you actualize those ideas um, which then give you basically a catalog or a dictionary or whatever you want to call it of a database of uh, methodologies mm -hmm. that you are using for all the different yeah. combinatorics and then that way down the line when it's all about experience I'm jumping into this uh, AR thing or <laughs> I'm going to um, Machu Picchu or I'm going to hang out with my mom yeah. or you know any variety of those things there and this is my biometric state now yeah. so please make it for that specific yeah. thing yeah yeah and, and the true experience and what I probably need to talk to some of your guests about is like how do we take all the learning that we do and really like make it exponential like how do we have exponential learning on like combining these different ingredients and try to make it more predictable about maximizing a certain experience based on what we know from each combination that we've already tried, yeah. right? So this yeah. is where my the, the, my tech background like starts to kind of work its way back and like yeah. how do we take this data and, and really learn from it and make better medicines for the future and make up for you know the hundred years of prohibition that has a kind of sequestered all this learning. Yeah. So um, there's a really interesting um, amount of people now are starting to, uh, to dive into um, simulation software for these types of purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, you, know, the, the, you go and you look and try, aim to reverse engineer the pieces that were put into the, um, to the final and um, to figure out what those pieces were and then run again just one experiment, two experiment, three experiment, just run as many of those experiments with slightly different combinations as possible to mm -hmm. find what the ideal um, final target um, is given that, uh, that all those profile variables that we um, yeah. listed. And um, maybe that actually is something that I don't even know if anyone is looking into cannabis <laughs> simulations. It's, stuff yet. it's very difficult. I think a lot of people have theorized on it. And I, I think that the true difficulty is that it's two-sided, right? One side is formulation, the other side is biology. So like everyone's yeah. biology is completely different, especially when it comes to cannabis because you're dealing with a complex endocannabinoid system that is throughout your body and everyone's receptors and, and everything have a different sensitivity, different configuration. And so somehow driving towards a path where we have a better way to understand our own biology and calibrate medicines based on that. That's where you know, the future of personal medicine has, has been talked about for, for many years now. And I think cannabis is an incredible application of really like delving into to the possibilities there. I like how you made it clear. You know, you got this, um, this formulation side and you got this biology side. You know, you got a different Ben versus a different Ori versus a different Allen, and these are just different um, biometrics that are going to compute your f um, formulation in slight variations. Mm -hmm. And so, if I want to relax, or if he wants to relax, or if you want to relax, that's three different formulas. It's very different. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we all have different baselines, right? And you're generally modulating from whatever your own personal baseline is, and so. You know, people often in the cannabis industry talk about indica versus sativa, you know, sedative versus uplifting. And, um, you know, for me, I don't need anything that's uplifting. I have quite a bit of energy. My mind works very quickly. So I prefer pretty much any time I consume something to have more of a sedative effect, to kind of slow things down and relax things and, 
and just slow the pace a little bit, right? I get very anxious and kind of ultra aware, like when I'm when I consume a sativa. And so, you know, otherwise it might be completely opposite for someone else. It's just it's making me realize how much harder Vertosa's work <laughs> is cut out. For, well, I mean, there, yeah. there, there's a reason we've been very, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I'm a, I've been a startup practitioner for many years, and, and one word that we always use is focus, right? Yeah. And so we have been hell-bent on creating the best delivery mechanism Yeah. to the point where we're doing true pharmaceutical uh, bioavailability studies uh, to understand how the cannabinoids progress through the bloodstream. Um, you know, we're just going to keep hammering away on that for quite some time. You're going to watch how the cannabinoids uh, go through the, the bloodstream into the body. You're yeah, it's a, I mean, that. it's important, right? Um, you know, different cannabinoids metabolize in different ways in the body, yeah. uh, how they're absorbed, different delivery mechanisms. Um, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is deliver an experience. And, and what that, you know, another iteration of that is, is uh, controlling consciousness. Mm -hmm. and you know, timing plays a big role, where it's absorbed, how yeah. it's absorbed, uh, what the vehicle is made of. You know, we, we have even kind of some anecdotal evidence that the, the surfactants, the, the, what's in that kind of emulsion system can play a role in how cannabinoids are absorbed. absorbed. So yeah. there's a lot to learn here. And, and, you know, we don't ever pretend to know everything. Uh, we wear uh, our limitations on our sleeve, but we're also eternal students and we're just super curious. And, yeah. You know, like you said, running 12, you know, research experiments constantly in the back lab. Um, wow. So and where are you guys based right now? Oakland, California. In Oakland? Yeah. And you guys got 11 people now. Oh, we have 11 people on staff. And you're uh, looking to hire. We are. Yeah. Which positions are you looking to hire? Um, all over. So like science, we haven't done a whole lot of marketing and branding to date. So kind of just starting to start hiring for that. Mm -hmm. You know, always looking for more talented salespeople for different categories. Uh, we're doing work in cosmetics and topicals now, so that's a whole nother beast. Whoa. Um, understanding that supply chain and the different nodes there. Um, so yeah, it's... Um, Damn. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's fun. And, and we're building a company that, you know, more than anything, the North Star for the company is building a great team. Yeah. Um, because yeah. that's when you know you can really achieve special things. Yeah, yeah that's what... Universe called you and Harold together, and now yeah. you guys are calling other people together for uh, yeah, mission. It's, it's pretty amazing. We have this like just ongoing kind of not a joke, but it's just like we're always saying like how serendipitously like everything is happening for the company, and we know that can't last forever. Uh, but we do know that when that is happening in the universe, that uh, you're on the right path. Right? Yeah, and it has really truly felt like that for the past year. Uh, with the whole team. That's so cool. And, um, yeah, it's what a, a blessing that is. Yeah, you know, it's a, I, I do, <laughs> a little bit of me is like, you know, I feel like it's all, all the work that we've put, put forth in the last, you know, 10 years, everything that we've been doing is just kind of like culminating you, into this mm -hmm. opportunity. You laid the groundwork for a long time on business acumen and focus, mm -hmm. you know, it was huge. And, yeah. and now it's uh, tackling one of this there's a great, interesting uh, challenge in cannabis, which is uh, going to be such a readily available thing of yeah. beverages. Well, and you know, I, I talked about in the beginning how I didn't previously have a strong connection to the plant. And the true blessing is that after I got into this industry, I became truly passionate about it. And this platform that I had of like speaking in front of different crowds all around the world, uh, with tech, I just changed the conversation and started educating about, you know, children in pain not having access to the medicine that yes. can very easily, you know, cure. Yes, uh, yes. And so, you know, also getting further in, as soon as I entered the industry, like friends, family, everyone started coming to, to me with questions. And, yeah. you know, I'm probably the last person that should be giving <laughs> medical advice. You know, it's a um, blessing and a curse. You know, I, I love helping uh, my family members, but, you know, when, when someone has cancer or is dealing with chronic migraines, like they should be hearing it from their doctor. And yeah. until that becomes commonplace, you know, we have a lot of work to do on the business side. Because if there's anything we've learned in the U.S. is that, that, you know, money talks, right? Yeah. And so if we can build a great, successful business that is built with a very strong core value, um, that we can really help change the world. Yeah. Many more questions for you next time. Last question is, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oh, man. Um, 
I think it's this movement right now, like back, uh, people's movement back to the planet, understanding the power of the earth and, and the plant, mm. and truly be conscious about what people are consuming and putting in their bodies. Yeah. Um, I think there's a big opportunity to kind of, you know, leverage that to like, I don't know, there's this happy marriage when, when capitalism is doing the right thing, and it's like, oh, good money going to good products, creating good life for people. Like, I think, you know, there's a lot of negativity out there in the world right now, but like if we see these trends, like people becoming more open and more spiritual and leading to conscious consumption, like I think there is a way to kind of just a, a better future. That's right, yeah. Ben, I'm so happy this finally happened. Yeah, me Thank too, you. Alan. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for coming on pleasure. the program. Yeah, yeah, and great work. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Go check out the links to Ben's work. Check out the links to Vertosa. Check out those links in the bio below. Also to New West Summit. Mm -hmm. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the leaders in your communities and around the world that you believe in. You can support simulation. Our links are below to our show. And also go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace. <laughs> Finally, that yeah. happened. That was great, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. and we'll definitely pick up um, more. You know, I, I really want to dive deeper into you got your the, the science and teach about that. So yeah. we'll we'll get more because that's where the that's where the hard stuff to uh, to teach about is actually at.